Hi everyone, today's lab is validity and reliability. It's lab one in your lab manual. If you look at the announcement slide, uh, review your syllabus, that's on K-State Online. All your good information is there. Uh, next week's lab, we will be discussing scientific article searching. Uh, before next week's lab, you need to go to uh, view these library videos uh, and you can click on the link that's available to you uh, on that slide. And then think of possible research topics. We'll talk more about that uh, with the next um, PowerPoint. Purpose of today's lab is to learn and identify methodology or analysis used in this laboratory and how it must be evaluated prior to its acceptance as being valid. We'll start with four types of measurement error. First one is lack of agreement among scores, so your blank there is agreement. Next one is failure of an instrument to measure consistently, so the second blank is consistently. Next one is failure of a tester to follow standardized testing procedures. Standardized testing is your blank. And the last one is lack of consistent performance by an individual being tested. So performance is your blank for the last one. Next slide, talk about lack of agreement among scores. The more scores, the greater the chances of error. The greater the chances of error. Example there is body composition. Different people taking different skinfold measurements on the same person. This type of error may be considered scoring error. So body composition or skin calipers is pinching and obviously different testers are going to pinch different amounts even on the same site. So that is uh, scoring error. Next one, failure of an instrument to measure consistently. Instrument is not calibrated correctly. Calibrated correctly. So example, scales used to measure body weight not zeroed correctly. This type of error may also be considered instrument error. So if you have a weight scale and you step on it once and it measures you at 150 pounds and that's correct, that's great. But if you step on it a second time and it measures you at 170, that is not good. That's a not calibrated and that's an instrument error. Next slide. Failure of a tester to follow standardized testing procedures. Testers not using the standardized procedure or at least the agreed upon procedure. So your blank there is agreed upon. Example for that, tester taking a pulse with the thumb and not the first two fingers. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the, pulse ha or the thumb has its own pulse, so you never take somebody's pulse with your thumb. Always take it with your first two fingers. This type of error may also be considered testing error. Testing error. Next one, lack of consistent performance by the individual being tested. Variable regarding what the performer does changes before testing sessions changes before testing session. Example, individual drinks too much the day before being tested or does not eat or sleep prior to a testing session. So somebody comes in extremely tired and dehydrated before they do a physical activity test, they're not going to perform well, that is called subject error. So your last blank there, this type of error may also be considered subject error. Next topic, validity. Validity addresses whether or not a test is relevant and applicable to a particular situation. So your first two blanks, relevant and applicable. So the question is, does an instrument measure what it's supposed to measure? Example, scale measures weight. We do not measure height using a scale. Looking down at the bottom there, there's three types of validity, content validity, criterion related validity, and construct validity. Criterion or con I'm sorry, content, criterion related, and construct. Next slide is content validity. Content validity addresses whether the components of the measurement measure what they are supposed to measure. Measure what they are supposed to measure. Example, Kinesiology 220 exam has content validity if it adequately samples what was covered in the class. It would not have content validity if it contained questions regarding other subjects. So when you take your first exam for the lecture part of this, if I put a bunch of questions that I didn't go over in your lectures, that would lack content validity. Next one is criterion related validity. Based on a comparison between your measurement and an already accepted standard. So standards your blank must have a criterion to compare against. Example, when comparing the results of a newly developed high school standardized test to the results of the ACT, which is, which is the accepted standard. Okay, So must have a standard for criterion related. It's more you versus the population. Next one is construct validity. Construct validity involves the use of predictive variables and relating test results to some behavior or attitude which are not easily measurable. 
So predictive variables and behavior. In other words, construct validity is the ability to deduce information from other observable measurements. So the example, measuring fitness based on a one mile run. Fitness does not, is not only measured by a one mile run, but if you have somebody run a mile, they run a good time, you could deduce that they are fit. The other one, measuring physical activity level based on a diary. So if you take somebody's diary, they write down every time they work out. By looking at that, you can deduce whether or not they're fit, but doesn't prove it. You can just use that as a predictive variable. That is construct validity. Next one's reliability. Reliability is the consistency or repeatability of a measure. So the question, does an instrument measure consistently? If the test is not consistent, if you cannot depend on successive trials to yield the same results, then the test cannot be considered reliable. Example, if a person is weighed on a scale and the scale reads 165 all three times, the measure can be considered reliable. Three types of reliability are stability, internal consistency, and precision. Stability, internal consistency, and precision. Stability is the day-to-day -day consistency of scores. Example there is weighing yourself on a scale which produces the same number day after day. Internal consistency, consistency of measures taken in the same experimental session measured by the same test taker. Example, heart rate during exercise measured by the same person within the same session using the same experimental procedure. Okay, so big difference there, stability is different days, internal consistency must be in the same testing session. Precision, precision is the repeat repeatability of a measurement. Consistent measure or performance by the instrument or tester over repeated measurements. Example, with darts, hitting the same spot on the dartboard numerous times in a row. Even if you weren't uh, aiming at that point, if you hit the same spot numerous times in a row, you are precise. Precision is different from accuracy. Accuracy is how close is the measurement to the true or desired value. So accuracy is looking for the actual measure or aiming for a certain goal. Okay, so difference between accuracy and precision, make sure you know that. Dartboard example for accuracy and precision. Accurate if you hit the bullseye when aiming for the bullseye. Okay, so goal there is hit the bullseye, you hit it, you're accurate. Precise if you hit at any given spot numerous times in a row. Note that by definition, if you are accurate consistently, then you are also precise. If aiming for bullseye and miss all over, then it is neither accurate or precise. Other definitions. First one's objectivity, the degree to which different testers can achieve the same scores on the same subjects. Is the variability due to interpretation or opinion? Next is relevance, application or pertinence of a measurement to study. For your questions for lab one, there are five questions. They're worth two points each. Uh, question one, if three different testers perform skinfold measurements on the same body site of, of the same subject within the same measurement session but get very different results, what type of reliability is lacking. So make sure you, when you look at that, you're looking at reliability. Okay, what are the types of reli reliability? What is lacking? Number two, explain in your own words why both accuracy and reliability are important when performing scientific measurements. Pretty self-explanatory. Number three, give an example of something demonstrating both accuracy and precision. Do not reuse the dartboard example and explain how it demonstrates both. So give me a different example. Tell me how both are being demonstrated. Number four, list and describe in your own words two types of measurement error. That's pretty straightforward. Measurement errors are listed in your notes. Number five, comparing the results of a 12-minute run for distance to a standard VO2 max treadmill test is what type of validity. So check out those types of validity. Tell me what type that is. Uh, this will be available on file share for you, so you'll upload the assignment, type in your answers, and then put it back, and I'll be able to take it and grade it. Those will be due uh, one week from... Uh, today. Thank you.